Our kids, um, you know, Coach Ash uh, had great relationships with these young guys, and uh, I know a lot of them love them, so it was a uh, you know, big change for them. But, uh, you know, they're, they're handling it the right way, and, uh, you know, I know they have a ton of respect for them. And, you know, I just want to start by thanking Coach Ash for giving me the opportunity uh, to, to coach here and to coach with him. Uh, I think he's a phenomenal football coach. I know he's got an absolutely great future ahead of him. And, uh, you know, he's probably the hardest working guy I've ever met in my life. Uh, you know, his commitment to Rutgers football uh, was absolutely exceptional. Uh, I was an honor to work with John McNulty. He's a phenomenal football coach. And, you know, uh, I got an opportunity to learn a great deal from him. Uh, you know, I, I had the opportunity to, to watch him coach many years ago when he was coaching Mike Deal. And, uh, you know, to get to work with him the last two years has been great. I uh, want to thank Pat Hobbs for uh, the opportunity uh, and his trust in giving me this opportunity to help guide our program uh, through these next few months. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, making sure that we take care of our players, uh, that we give them a chance to be successful, uh, that we keep them together. Obviously, you know, it's a tough time for them, and, uh, you know, our leaders are doing a great job of keeping everybody on task. And, you know, I guess for me, probably one of the biggest things is a tremendous honor uh, as a guy that's from New Jersey and loves New Jersey, to have the opportunity to represent Rutgers and represent New Jersey um, is, you know, it's really special for me. It's an uh, unbelievable opportunity to, uh, to represent our players. So uh, I'm really excited about it, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, if you guys have any questions. What, what's the last 24 hours so been like for you? I mean, what did you kind of find out this was going to happen? What have you done since then? Uh, it's been pretty crazy. I mean, I, I guess almost uh, a little less than 24 hours ago, uh, I found out, and you know, I guess you just kind of have to hit the ground running. You know, I and mean, we kind of made plans pretty much on the fly. Uh, the coaching staff's been awesome. I mean, obviously, it's a very tough day uh, for all of those guys, but they're real true pros, and uh, you know, they've been incredibly helpful. You know, uh, in, in every way. So really, that's been the big thing is communicating with the players trying to keep them on task and then making sure that we're communicating with the staff and you know see what things that uh, you know we're gonna keep the same and what you know minor changes we're gonna make and think will you know help the team. Um, you're gonna be the office coordinator? Yes. What types of changes will the office uh, go Well you know I don't think you can make you know major overhauls. I mean we have you know basically five days to get ready for a game. So uh, you know, it's kind of a lot of it just streamlining what we do, making sure that the players understand what we do, you know, maybe some minor tweaks in the way that, you know, that I see things and, you know, communication with, uh, you know, our entire offensive staff. We have a bunch of guys that are really close in there. They work really well together. So I, I don't think there'll be any major changes. I just think that uh, we'll do the things that we think give our kids the best chance to win and give our players a chance to be successful. A lot of times, every level of sport, when changes like this are made, go one of two ways, sometimes it sparks guys, sometimes it doesn't. What have you seen from the players in terms of you know, their reaction to this and how they're uh, at least trying to deal with it? You know, fire them up? How, how have you seen their attitude? Well, you know, I'm sure it's a mixed bag because, you know, it's a very emotional experience for them. You know, I mean, I, as I told the kids yesterday, I mean, everybody in the room, including me, is here because of Rick. So, you know, obviously we all have relationships with them, so that, that's a big you know, a big part of it. And, you know, what the thing we said is, you know, we have eight games to go and we have a lot of great opportunities in front of us. So it's really been a big part of it has been just getting them to understand that and stay focused. And, you know, we have great leadership. Uh, we have really some guys that have been here that have a lot of time and work invested. And they've done a great job. Our leadership council and our captains have done a great job of communicating with the young guys and just telling them, hey, let's stay the course and let's, you know, go figure it out over the next, you know, two plus months. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. And a lot of a lot of you've experienced coaches struggle with doing both jobs as running the program and managing an offensive back offense kind of coordinator. Just curious how you plan to manage your time and if, if that's you know a big ask for, for what's going on inside the program. Well, you know, I mean I know it's not the same level, but I did it for eight years. Um, uh, but I also think that uh, we have a great offensive staff. Uh, we have a lot of like-minded people that see things the same way. So, you know, while I'm here talking to you, those guys are working really hard at putting things together. Um, you know, uh, you know, Pete Russell, the head coach for a long time, he's a great offensive mind. You know, Lester Herb really does a great job uh, with our receivers, but he's been a running back coach. He has tremendous experience. Colby Smith uh, has tremendous experience. Drew Lascari ran the same offense I ran, uh, you know, when at Don Bosco, so he understands the way I think and, you know, a lot of the things that we're going to do. 
So, you know, I think there's uh, a lot of continuity, and we're going to count on those guys to, to really help do a lot of work. Well, just talk about how you're handling the recruiting aspect of it now, and will there be more responsibilities that you have among the staff? Uh, how does that matter? Well, you know, I mean, obviously the guys that we have committed, we're, you know, we're certainly going to honor that when we do everything again and keep them. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's my responsibility to be out there offering guys scholarships. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm the interim coach, so you know, I think it's my job to make sure that we keep those guys interested and, and that we show them, uh, you know, what we have to offer uh, about Rutgers and, and obviously keep encouraging guys to stay interested and involved in what we're doing. But uh, we're going to kind of pretty much stay status quo and uh, hold down the fort uh, until um, you hope to be a candidate for the, a permanent job? Right, you know, I would tell you that I've worked my entire life uh, to prepare myself for this opportunity, and you know, to me, this is like the holy grail. So, of course, but you know, I understand that you know that there's a lot more that goes into that. It's way over my head, and you know, I'm just going to go do my job the, the best I can. I'm going to add that too because you're you know, coaching son, coaching family. Um, I'm sure it was not the perfect, ideal circumstance. Want to run a college football program, but you know how ready are you for this? I mean, you've been doing it for your whole life. Just talk to me a little bit about you know, just how, how ready you are, and how you are for to be a college football coach. Well, I guess we'll find out in the next eight weeks. But uh, you know, the truth is, you know, I, I think that football is football, and I have literally spent my entire life on a football field. I mean, I, you know, I've been on a football team since I'm five years old. You know, so uh, you know, my dad was a coach. All my brothers are coaches. You know, basically every positive male influence in my life was a coach in some way, shape, or form. So, um, you know, I, I think that I'm, you know, prepared to help these guys going forward. But, you know, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, you know, just keeping the focus on the task at hand. I'm not really worried about the future. I'm just worried about, you know, getting ready to practice tomorrow. Is Art your quarterback? I mean, you're obviously very familiar with Johnny. Is he going to you know, feature him more to the offense? Well, yeah, Art, I, you know, I've already told him, you know, Art's, Art's going to start the game, and, you know, uh, we'll see, you know, some of the stuff that Johnny does well. Obviously, I have a tremendous amount of familiarity with him, and, you know, I've told uh, the quarterback already, you know, if there's a role that he could play that helps us win games, then we're absolutely going to do that, too. But, you know, I think Art's played really well the last couple of weeks. I think he's shown great improvement. Uh, he's worked really hard, and I think, you know, the biggest thing is those two guys are great friends. Uh, they're both really good leaders, and uh, they're going to work really hard to help each other. So just to follow up with Art, you don't have to stay in red shirt. He's going to play the fourth game this weekend. I, I do not. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure you're calling the plays, right? You haven't come out and said that. So that's fine. Yes. Yeah. Um, any other staff changes? I know you have John and Drew, but are you, are you adding anyone to the staff? Uh, not really. Not, I mean, I don't know from the outside. I mean, you know, uh, I guess, you know, we could shove some things around inside. But, okay. um, who's going to handle the tight end responsibilities now? And Will uh, McLean Carter, do you have an update on this? Uh, John Weiss will handle the tight ends, and uh, I actually don't have an update on McLean. I, you know, he's not going to play this week. I know that. You, know. Yeah. you said the players are handling it well. You played four games, coaching change. Do you have any transfer portal issues, guys entering? I know it's early in this process. Uh, yeah, not at this point, but I mean, it's kind of the way college football is going. I mean, I guess anything is possible, you know. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll deal with it on a you know, player by player basis. But, you know, right now, the guy's done a really good job of staying the course and, you know, right in the middle of the season. So it's not, you know, where you're really going now. So I think that uh, they have a really good sense of that. Obviously, this is an odd position to be in so early in the season. I'm just curious, this is a home game. You've got several home games left. And what would you say to the paying customers, the fans, who are going to be that? We're looking inside saying what's going on in there. What would you say to them who come to the stadium? Well, I would say, you know, we got a great group of kids that are working really hard. Uh, they're going to play really hard on Saturday. And, uh, you know, we'd love to see the whole state of New Jersey come out and, you know, support these guys because they need it. You know, they've worked really hard, and obviously the results aren't uh, what we wanted. But, you know, I, I believe that we're moving towards something, and I think that we have an opportunity to get better and grow this week. And, you know, uh, I, you know I, I'm very – Confident that our kids are just going to go out and play really hard. Did you get a chance to look at any Marlins yet? Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I have. I mean, you know, I, I obviously I think that uh, they have a, a dynamic offense. I mean, you know, Coach Locks is a great coach, and they, you know they do a great job. And uh, you know, I know they had a tough game the other night, but uh, you know we could relate to that a little bit. And uh, you know, I, I I think it's got an opportunity to be a great game. But I think right now our biggest focus has to be on us. We we can't worry whole lot about them. We got to streamline some things and get ourselves squared away. And by the time we get to practice tomorrow, you know, we'll have a better sense of you know what we're looking at.
specific, uh, specifically on the offense. Uh, I know you said minor changes and your you know, coordination and those are changing. <coughs> and you, I know you're a spread guy, generally speaking. Is there any way that we're going to see more spread content? Well, yeah. Time? Basically, my thought process has always been that we are a, a multiple eye team that adds the elements that come with the spread offense, you know, whether that's the RPO stuff or it's the you know quarterback reads or whatever. Really, the biggest thing is what can our kids handle and what can we get to? You know, I mean, I, I think that we have all the things built in to, to do what I'd like to do, but, you know, it's really going to come down to what can our players execute because we have to put them in a position to be successful, and, you know, that's the most thing. The most important thing is they, they have to feel confident in what they're doing. When you mentioned about Maryland, you said, you know, our biggest focus right now has to be on ourselves. Are you referring more to the game plan and the uh, – you're talking about team stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about okay, what we're going to do to go out and try to win a game on Saturday. I mean, we have to, you know, make sure that our house is in order and that we understand what we're doing. And you know, I, I think uh, you know, Andy's got some plans for the defense that I, you know he thinks okay, these might be some minor things that we can do to help our players. We do the same thing on offense and the same thing on special teams. So once we have a, a good sense of that, then you know we'll really worry about it. Anything else, guys?